It's April, 1916. The French countryside, once quaint and empty, now bore witness to the lines of trenches and marching boots stretching from Switzerland to the Channel. The mobilisation of French forces had ramped up since Germany's preemptive invasion of Belgium, casting a long shadow over the landscape. Despite the tension, no British forces stood alongside the French. This once dependable alliance had crumbled in the wake of the Commune's ascent to power, and Russia, a crucial ally exacerbated by internal strife, would prove to be of no benefit. As the clouds of uncertainty gathered overhead, it became painfully clear that the burden of resisting the Central Powers rested squarely on the French alone. Hi, I'm Colonel Cam, and welcome to 12 years as the Commune of France in the Great War Redux. Hello guys and welcome to one of the videos that I made. Now really quickly before we get into this one, please like and subscribe. We are so close to 5,000 subscribers. Once we hit that goal, I'm going to do a brand new mod on the channel and I'm going to leave it up to a vote for you guys to choose. And without further ado, let's get straight into the Commune of France in the Great War Redux. Okay, so we are France. Look at this. We have this guy who's a captain of industry. Look at this. That's good. Memories of 1870, oh yes. Okay, so this is literally just like the Great War modifier in normal normal Hearts of Iron 4. And obviously recruitable population factor, uh, factory output, dockyard output, disjointed government, yep, that's the same. Uh, stability though, look at this, I don't even know who this guy is. Champagne riots, oh. Socialism support, hey, it looks like we might even be going socialist, so you know, that's actually good for us. And after looking through all of the national spirits, I decided to look through the decisions tab as well, because there's always a lot of content there, and I found that we could also just occupy Morocco if we wanted to, but there was also this National Assembly political party thing. And then we've got this. The National Assembly is a central body of the Third Republic. Oh yes, this is the Third Republic, the third attempt. And losing the majority in this institution would prevent us from making political, economic, and even military decisions. And you guys already know the drill. It's click the buttons and get more seats, but the buttons come at a cost, like manpower or political power or any anything they can think of in the game. However, as France, just like Italy and Vanilla Hoi 4, we start at war. And we start at war with this country called Wadai. It's like this small Central African country where there's absolutely no supply and well we got to fix that and we have some political power let's let's truth seek a political power gain yeah immediately we're getting that all right <laughs> nothing wrong with getting more political power equal strong and independent it represents the hope of a new france there we go we get uh stability socialist diplomacy popularity of socialism goes up hey it's good why is there a police car outside it is 11 44 a.m who's committing crimes at this hour so we decided just to occupy Morocco because, you know, why not? But Germany got a little bit upset and they demanded some compensation. Oh, British involvement. Good pressure on Krauts. Okay. Uh, they offer a police peaceful solution. They will abandon the idea of military intervention if we transfer part of the French Congo to a German protectorate. So much better than a bloody war. And basically, I accepted it. I wasn't going to go to war with Germany in 1910. We hadn't even turned communist yet, so I don't, there was no point. All right, now we should be getting all of our organization, and now the attack should be pretty easy. Uh, uh, yeah, easy wins. Now, with our fully supplied troops, the Wadaians, I think you can call them, they, they, would, they would fall very easily. And by 1911, I thought it was time to really look into this National Assembly thing in the Decisions tab. Uh, we can actually turn Socialism when we go here. We need to control 150 seats though. I'm guessing that'll be the Socialist. We've only got like a combined of like 100 and something. Not 150, so that's, uh, that's a problem. Fortunately, our focus tree allows us to merge the parties together so that we could have multiple different parties and combine the amount of seats that we would have. Ally with the Republicans. The Democratic Republican Alliance will join our Socialist Alliance. Hey, there we go, 66 seats. Hey, that's actually not bad. So we have 99. I think we actually have 99 overall. Mass workers protest, um, which gives us the most socialist support. This one. Does this do anything good? No, well, yeah. Give us more socialist support, please. Okay. Now we get another guy, he's corrupt. Bro. So now we have, oh, he's, it's just getting worse, man. It's just getting worse. We need the socialist guy in power immediately. Yeah, our democratic leader has changed like four times already and they're getting worse and worse. It's, it's not getting any better. Lovely, we accept your invitation. Of course, Russia. Here we go, ally the Republicans. Now we should have 165. Good, that actually unlocks some things in the focus tree. 
Uh, not that, that's 250 seeds. But yes, all of down here now. We can build more civilian factories, get more steel. Oh my gosh. That is, wow. We're, we're doing that immediately. I feel like we get enough civilian factories through our focus trees. Like, all these are just civilian factories, right? Then we can just start building military factories really early. I feel like that's a good idea because if we have enough, then... Why not? I mean, we have we have enough resources to get out as many military factories on stuff as we can, so we might as well. Yes, my mission was to outproduce Germany in one specific industry, and that was in air. I wanted to make sure that I had air supremacy over the entirety of Europe before they could even launch a plane off the ground. <laughs> Now that it's 1912, apparently it is time for an election, and that means another change of leader, and I just picked the guy who had the best bonuses. Look at this man. This is so much good factory and industry stuff in this socialist tree. Aff affiliate with the CGT. That looks so good, man. We're doing it. Now, unfortunately, the parliament decided that they actually wanted our guns to work and not break down after firing one shot. So what happens is now that we have a, a reliability war, a, 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 a reliability law. What? It costs 50% more to produce infantry equipment, but they get more reliability. Come on, bro. No, you're, you're joking. At least we got a stockpile of them, hey. With our stockpile of equipment, I wanted to put some of it on the market so then we can get more building material. I don't even know what it is. It's like building supply stuff that allows you to build faster and then we could build more military factories and then we can make more guns and put them on the market so that we can get more military factories and it's just a cycle that never ends. <laughs> And by 1913, I had finally worked through the focus tree enough that it was time to become a fully-fledged socialist country. Boom. Look at our new flag. Hey, it's good. Motion. Socialist takeover in France. Or oh, we get a super event. It only exists where there is consciousness. Yep. All right. There we go. New color with like a dark red. It's a crimson red. That's nice. And this will get us to that. Remove. Our oh, we need to remove that immediately. Okay. We'll do this. We could do th we'll do this one because it gives us more civilian factories, and then we'll do that. After fiddling around in my political tab for a while, Russia wanted to copy our revolution, so that they had a whole revolution of their own. In fact, they had multiple revolutions. The August Revolution. Whoa, Russia. Social democracy. We got the Russian Republic here. The uh, form the Peasant Council. The National Assembly will be dissolved, allowing us to rule with no opposition. That's what we're talking about. Now we're getting to, into into communism. Now we're getting into real <laughs> real socialism. No opposition, yes, sir. Now we have ooh, the November Revolution, the collapse of the Russian autocracy. Oh, 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 Russian Constitution Assembly, constituent. Oh. So this is the second Russian revolution they've had at this point, and suddenly the Baltics are free, Poland is free, Finland is free. There's a bunch of other states that are now free from the Russian Empire. It's, it's weird. <laughs> I just realized that, uh, oh, what's going on? Yes, I've just realized, look at Russia. They've, uh, they've got, uh, released a bunch of independent republics. We've got like half of Ukraine, Finland, the Baltics are now a thing. Estonia is a bit small though. And oh, look at this, Kyrgyz autonomy, yeah, it's good. Tell me why Ukraine is kind of half like that, I don't know. But uh, after building up some forts along the German border, our leader was the victim of a, an assassination attempt. He was the victim of an assault this morning in his residence at the something palace. S several organized assault troops. Oh my gosh. So wait, we have two, two options. The army intervenes in time and saves the president. We are helpless. With this gives us division, defense, or core territory and war support. That's pretty good. So you know what? I'm going to save this guy. Look at this. Division, defense, and core territory plus 10%. How can you go wrong with that? Yeah, so I decided to save him. Uh, I don't know what would have happened if I didn't save him, but the division defense was uh, pretty cool. Now we can finally go beyond fear and remove memories of 1870. We got to remove all of the negative national spirits that we have. We've only got one left, and that's that. So, yeah, getting rid of that would give us only positive national spirits. Uh, maneuvers completed. Cool, yeah, whatever. A thousand guns. Look at that. Price normal. Yeah, that's going to give us 14,000 whatever that is economic capacity which will help you construct buildings faster all right there you go put it on the market anyone want to buy it anybody want to buy any takers after finally removing memories of 1870 germany launched their preemptive invasion of belgium 
joint invasion with the Netherlands, actually, because the Netherlands joined the Central Powers, and uh, that was starting to worry me, and it was really interesting because we were actually guaranteeing Belgium instead of the British, but they didn't call us into arms. What in the peace conference is this? Look at the, look, what in the Hearts of Iron 4 peace conference is this? We got Belgium over here, the German Empire, Belgium, the German Empire, Belgium. Nice. Yep. Okay. Anyway, this would be the time we would get our first fighter plane, and the process of outproducing Germany in the air would begin. We got fighters? Yeah, we got, we got 95 already. New school, bro. Let's go. Fighter production cost. Yes. Heavy bomber and rigid ship air, but I don't care. Fighter production cost goes down. After ensuring all my African fronts were all covered, there wasn't really much I did this year. I just kind of mobilized a lot of my army on the border and made sure Italy was covered, and I made sure everything would go to plan if we were to go to war instantly. Uh, wow, we got a lot of political power. Let's get to free trade. We can afford it. Right, even more factory output. Enough, okay, we can't actually afford any more military factories if we're gonna be on free trade. Because we don't have the resources anymore, we're trading them. And by this time, I was ready to go to war with Germany, but I was trying to figure out how to go to war with them because they weren't declaring war on me, so I had to find a way through my focus tree. Gains anti-German propaganda. Oh, we have to not have it. Oh, I'm an idiot, why did I read it wrong? Okay, so we need to wait until anti-German propaganda runs out. Uh, mass produce the Chocha, Choche, Choche, it would be Choche because of the French. We get a 2.5% recru recruitable when we get war goal against Germany. If nothing else embraces conflict in Europe, we will attack. Waiting will only de delegitimize the return of our precious territory of Alsace Lorraine. To recover our due, we will have to fight. Here we go. So the Central Powers. So we have to cover this whole front here. If they walk into us, we'll be fine. We'll destroy their air war and then we'll start pumping out close air support destroy their divisions with our close air support, and then start walking in. That was the plan. All I had to do now was set everything up, and I was ready to declare war on Germany. 6 a.m. The Commune of France launches a, launches a surprise attack on Germany. Here we go, declare war. Potential enemies, Italy, man. I didn't see, I didn't see that. Hey, it's, uh, let's just select half of them and put them in, uh, the Italy here. All right, we, we've, we had 10 days just to sort some stuff out, all right? We, we, we miscalculated, but now we're ready. The surprise attack at, at, at 6 a.m. There it is. Let's go. Attention. Why is my blind making the most annoying noises right when I'm about to declare? Oh my gosh, my blind won't even. Let's go. I'm declared war. All right. First thing, planes should be. Yep, Italy is in. So we're at war with Italy and Germany. We'd be at war with Austria-Hungary soon too, but the first place I was actually going to push was going to be the colonies in Africa. I wanted to clean them up very quickly. Why are we shuffling around? Stop it. What is this shuffling, man? And then I got an offer from Romania asking to join the Entente. And I said, why not? Because I guess it might take the uh, pressure off Russia, hopefully. Now, we had this one focus called the European Strategy. And it gave socialism support to a lot of countries. And I wanted to do this. One, to decrease stability in the countries we were fighting against. But this focus actually instantly turned Russia into a socialist country. Like, proper socialist. Oh, we got Soviet... Oh, we got the Soviet, uh, republics. Look at that. It's cool. Now that we had cleaned up our African front, and I didn't really want to push through North Africa because there was no supply, so I wanted to go to Italy directly, and uh, that was our way forwards, hopefully. So we broke through the southern part of the ta Italian front, and then managed to pull off this crazy encirclement, which was like the whole entire Italian army guarding our front. It was, it was good. All right, there we go. Attention. Let's see the casualties. Italy. Only 80k from that. Yeah, they got some weak divisions. Attention. After that encirclement, the entire Italian front was open, so I could just start walking into mainland Italy even further, but then we got a bit close to the Austrians, and they decided they didn't like that, so they reinforced they reinforced the front. Tension. Am I kidding? What, what is with world tension being so broken in this mod? Considering there is a whole world war going on, it's hard to imagine that world tension is at 16%, but nonetheless, uh, we were stuck in Italy. It should be easier down here, but no, because I guess because we're close to the Austrians now, they've decided to... Reinforce Italy, so now we're, we're stuck. 
Okay, so it's 1918, and you would not believe it. As soon as I have released my, as soon as I release my oh, multiple yeah. endings video, I've got COVID. I mean, this disease should be extinct by now. I've still got it a little bit, but I'm a lot better than I was playing. So expect the next few years just to be mostly post commentary because I didn't do much talking. You know, it's ironic because speaking of pandemics, I literally get the influenza pandemic in the game, which is a uh, pretty disastrous. Oh my gosh, army epidemic. Oh my gosh. Dude, supplies die in them. And during this time, apparently Britain formed the Imperial Federation. Alright, Australia is just not in a faction, in their faction. Uh, New Zealand kind of, I guess, but these aren't even annexed. The British, okay, we've still got the British Raj, but they're not annexed. How is that the Imperial Federation? What are you talking about? It's the biggest lie in diplomacy ever. And then I get an alliance offer from Siam, which doesn't really have any use to me. I guess Germany's colonies over in East Asia. But apart from that, they're pretty useless, but I accept it anyway, because why not? <laughs> After a while of just looking around the screen, wondering what to do, I decided that maybe we could try and push through the German line into Belgium, maybe, perhaps? With our complete dominance of the air and a tons of close air support damage, I thought that we could definitely just get through this one province and well, it worked. In fact, we were able to push even into the Netherlands. It was that easy. Can I modify this division? Uh, flamethrower? Hell yeah, you see that? I got some flamethrowers in my divisions now. They ain't gonna stop us, man. Flamethrowers. Ottomans is a member of the Entente. Russians got access to the Mediterranean? What? What in the what? What? The bro, the Ottomans just agreed to subjugation from the Russians. They're an integrated puppets. Since when does this even? Yeah, so that was a bit of an odd one. But uh, then they made me choose between Russia or the Ottoman Empire, and then one of them would leave the faction, and I, I was baffled by it. We have to decide between who we would rather. The Russians, right? They're the ones who are actually socialists as well, considering we're also socialists. So obviously the Russians, right? That makes more sense. Now, as you can see, I'm working very hard to try and get this encirclement, where I've, I've pushed into the southwest of the Netherlands, and now I'm trying to get into the into the southeast of the Netherlands and try and c close it off, but it just it just wasn't happening. Now there's Austrians there? Bro, these guys have changed nationality like 13 times. Eventually, I gave up on that encirclement, and I just tried filling it in normally, and we went on a bit, a bit of a run. We took Brussels and Antwerp at some point, so it was a pretty good attack. Hurry up. Get in there. Oh, we really took that first, really. Despite it being a good push, it wasn't a good encirclement, or an encirclement at all, so the Germans were able to reinforce that front pretty easily, so I had to try again. Actually, let's do it here. Let's go here, and then here. That's probably the best way. Come on. Oh, we did it. Okay. Now we help here. We pushed one province, but then we ran out of supply there, so uh, we, we couldn't push anymore. But I found a solution. We'll have double the tank force in this area. Now, I know we've got no supply, but we're working on it. Yes, my idea was to double the tanks. However, that didn't work either. The supply got even worse. But then I figured maybe if we went from the other side, that would work. There's no time to waste. Oh, we did it. We actually did it. Now look at the size of that encirclement. You cannot tell me that I am terrible at this game. I can pull off. Look at this encirclement. I mean, it's just insane. We've done 1.7 million now. Ooh. Okay. They should be so much weaker here now. We can get all our tanks and just push here. From here on in, it was just smooth sailing. It, all it takes is just one good encirclement, and all of a sudden, you can just press the go button on the field field marshal, and you're off. You, you're good. See you, see you in Berlin. Unfortunately, we would not get the chance to get to Berlin because Eric Ludendorff offered peace. Eric Ludendorff asked for peace. He is uh, returned from a meeting with Marshall. With, uh, with full notice of German surrender, the war is over. Now the winners will receive a spoils. The German state will survive. Peace at last. War will stop at Berlin. Major any okay now we're gonna do this because I'm not trying to do that peace at last the armistice of campaign we have won the French and the Entente are victorious Germany and her allies will have to pay the prices demanded by the victors in the post-war treaty it takes a while for the peace conference to get going so we were just I was just demobilizing my army and my economy at this point because why I mean it, it says to do that hey oh my gosh 
A bunch of land just got transferred. How is this all our land? That's hilarious. We've got all the way up there. And then what about all this? Victoria's faction gets claim state and cause in the com in the conference. What? Look at Africa. Look how much of Africa we got. That is so good. Uh, what else can we do here? Develop. Yeah, whatever. I'll develop all this. Hey, it's good. But uh, I would rather have, you know, Belgium. What is this? Is all of Italy just demilitarized? All of northern I Italy? Is that demilitarized? That's hilarious. And then Germany decided to have a civil war between Democrats and Socialists. So I tried to support the Socialists, but I couldn't because they hated us. And yeah, um, that's essentially the end of the game. My videos are going to be a little bit shorter now because I'm trying to add post-commentary to actual events in the game instead of just post-commentating about what's going to happen and then showing the clip. It, it makes I think it makes it more entertaining. Uh, I'll leave it up to you guys in the comments so if you pr prefer the longer videos. Other than that, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.